So I figured I'd start this day off by fixing something on this disc which has been bothering me. You know, when I got this thing, there was no pin where you see this pin. There was only this bolt which is roughly half the size. So this cylinder is like slopping around in there. And actually the opposite side of it, you can see it got pretty mangled just from all the abrasion and the force. <sighs> so I decided that wasn't good. And uh, this is one of those deals where you really shouldn't tolerate problems like this on machinery because most of the time it's not all that complicated to fix. I even had this pin. The only problem is I don't have the style of cotter pin that I really like. All I have are these ones. And uh, if they're just in there one notch, I feel like that's a little too easy to pull out of there. So I just shoved them through all the way and hopefully that'll be in there for the course of the day. Oh, we're left with this actually pretty resilient bolt. It's a great eight. I guess that's why it never bent or anything, but... I like it the way it is now better. Oh yeah, gotta throw some grease in this and it's finally time to hit the road because we gotta try and cover three fields today with this four fields today across two properties in two different towns that I've seeded over the last two days. We need to go back and incorporate these seeds into the soil, smooth it out a little bit more with this disc, and uh, hopefully there's gonna be some rain coming up soon. Weather forecast couldn't really decide. Uh, I thought it was supposed to rain today actually, but they canceled that. Uh, however, now it's starting to feel like rain again, so I'm gonna feel a lot better once we uh, start to put some miles on this rig today. stuff every day is it excessive you know I don't really think so the reality is every single time I hook up to the grease fittings on either one of these pieces of equipment yes including the new tractor it takes grease like where the front axle pivots up and down it takes a good three or four pumps every single day before grease starts coming out the side so it is going somewhere it does need to be replenished and in light of that, and, and that's on this, that disc, it takes a lot. Every single one of those wheel bearings, and there's six that hold the, uh, the gangs on with the disc blades, they take a fair amount of grease. And when you combine these two things with the old European saying, nobody's ever greased themselves for, I don't care if it takes a full tube every day, I'm doing it. We got to cover a lot of acreage today. I did, uh, I had a full day to do the one field we're going to and also that property with three fields on it last time when we disked it initially. We got to cover all that this afternoon because uh, I got plans for tomorrow. So, why am I in shadow? Yeah, there we go. I'm a little apprehensive. I think that, I think and hope and I'm kind of counting on it going a lot faster this time around simply because uh, now the soil's already broken up. It shouldn't be as much work on the tractor and a disc. Thus, we should be able to do it faster and easier. Yeah, look at all those seeds everywhere. We gotta work them into the soil and try and smooth this out a little bit today. Man, I've been filming with that GoPro. It's not perfect, but overall I like it. But man, the zoom on this thing is handy. Ah, oh, yeah, look at all them seeds. Especially that one. Ah, oh, it doesn't zoom in anymore. All right, well, we're here. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna start off in fifth gear, four by four, and uh, we'll see what happens.
I'm really starting to wish that I had built a large roller because I'm having to go over this at least twice to get um, the smoothness out of it that I want. If I had a big roller, what it would do is it would smash all these smaller clumps of dirt together and it would give a nice firm seed bed for these oats to grow out of, which a disc can't do even under ideal circumstances. Because Oats are not a perennial crop, obviously. I'm gonna get one solid cutting out of this, Lord willing, assuming they actually grow. I'll get one good cutting out of them, and, uh, and they'll grow back a little bit for second cutting, so I've been told I've never tried to grow oats before, but that's what that's what everybody tells me, so that's what I'm kind of banking on here. And uh, so I'm gonna have to come in and plant this again. I'm gonna have to come in and plant this land again at the end of this year. So I'll have something to cut early next year unless we get rained out. Oh, unless we get rained out. And the other thing I'm gonna do, I was talking to a buddy of mine about this. We need to come in here, and uh, I'm actually gonna take a little break here for a second. I gotta check some stuff. I'm gonna get the backhoe fixed so we can rip out these trees. That doesn't look like much, but you know, that's what, four stems on there? So I think that was a decently sized larger sapling tree whatever that got cut off and those stupid stems are what grew back up so I try to rip it out with the tractor and all I can do is break off some of those stems like a few at a time. I can't get the roots. This is the final lap down this field. Uh, unfortunately, this field is on the part of the property that's pretty much always wet. So for that reason, I had to drop a gear. So we're moving at a breathtaking four miles an hour because obviously the wet soil is a lot harder on this tractor to have to pull this disc through. I really like this tractor. It starts to run smooth. For the work it does, it uses very little fuel. But I'm thinking about that Case 930. Once I load up the rear tires on it, it'll be at least a couple thousand pounds heavier than this thing, and it puts out like a third more horsepower. It's gonna be nice doing some tillage work with that. But I will say I'm really happy with this disc because, here, look at this. That's a decently smooth field. I really wish I had the roller that I talked about earlier, uh, but I don't. However, you know, I really think that's gonna be workably smooth and considering that this is the only tillage tool that I have other than, other than my garden tiller, I, don't, don't I have like another plow somewhere or something? I, I honestly, I, I'm wondering right now, I don't even remember. But whatever the case, this is the only tillage tool I have that I can think of. And I've managed to take this from rough sod and slice it up and then come back again and uh, go through this. And I will say, I could be wrong, but I believe that today this is the most amount of fuel I've ever put through this tractor in a day. We are starting to get a little close to the bottom of that gauge and uh, there is a fuel station between where we are now and where I live so we're gonna hopefully make it to that without running out of fuel which I'm cautiously optimistic is gonna be doable and, uh, and then it's time to do almost this much more up at the other property. So I will say we're averaging about five acres an hour right now Overall, I feel like that average, at least we were, maybe that average dropped because we're going four miles an hour right now. But as of earlier, we are doing five, five acres an hour. So let's see. Sometimes this is not the easiest thing in the world to shift ranges on. It always goes in, but sometimes I have to uh, let the gear spin a tiny little bit first. First day driving a tractor, slip off the pedal. Alright, yeah, so how about that? Alright, well, hopefully as much as most people would enjoy it, and honestly I enjoy watching the video and laughing about it later. I really hope we don't run out of fuel here. And uh, 
Onwards we go. The other thing that's on my mind is I feel like this disc, it's uh, it's not, I have to kind of feather the hydraulics a little more often because I think that uh, hydraulic cylinder has an eternal leak on it and I feel like that leak's getting worse. Hopefully it lasts through today, assuming it does, hoping, hoping it does. Uh, I should have a chance to take it apart and repack it long before this disc is needed again, which hopefully won't be until this fall. So, gotta say my prayers that this uh, that we get some rain. And would it be bad if you guys would join me in that and that this stuff would actually grow? Because I don't really know what's gonna happen next. So, onwards to the next field. Oh yeah, it's looking workable. I don't see any seeds still on the surface. Maybe there's some little ones. It's tough to tell with all that uh, dead grass from when we came in here and shredded this. I think it's gonna be workable, but you can see, if I had a nice roller that would do one of those jobs, it'd be a lot smoother and look a lot nicer. Oh well, something to look forward to for next year. Time to make tracks. Made it home, gonna let this tractor cool down for a few minutes, then I'm gonna eat some dinner and we're gonna head out to that other field. <sighs> let me tell you, I, it's gotta be a full moon or something. It's kinda cloudy, so I'm not really sure. It's gotta be a full moon because I feel like we have uh, a large, larger than average amount of less than excellent drivers out here tonight. So that drive back from that property, I've done on tractor, I don't know, probably a whole bunch of times like I farmed that place all last year for two cuttings so you do the math and um, I don't think I've ever seen as many incidents of just downright dangerous driving as I did tonight like the most recent one wasn't that bad you know we're going down like this u-shaped kind of like valley on the road we're like going down it this way and uh, and I can see over this hill and you can see a mile let's say off in the other direction I can tell there's nobody coming so I wave a couple cars past and they go and everything's fine and then I see a car coming up over the hill the opposite direction so I stop waving people through I think like one more car goes and then there's this uh, this thing and, and I didn't know this term maybe you guys knew this term but it's called a bro dozer this is a term that mechanic Steve introduced me to because evidently in the mechanics world this is like a, this is like the trade name for, and you know what I'm talking about, that style of truck, anything with the garbage can sized exhaust tip on it, and I don't say garbage can sized exhaust tip on it for no reason. This thing, with a car going the opposite direction, way, way too close to be in any way, shape, or form safe, all I saw was a mass of fender flares and a garbage can sized exhaust go tearing past me and cut ahead of me. That one wasn't that bad. On another road, the road before that road, um, you know, I didn't even have it in my mind that anyone would attempt to pass me. And I don't usually let traffic stack up that bad. You know, it's really not that far out to this field. And, you know, there's some turns and stuff, so you lose a lot of cars through those. There's plenty of straight, easy to pass on areas. You know, and I'll pull over and let people pass whenever, you know, at, at times. But this guy, on a blind curve, I'm pretty sure it was a blind curve from his perspective. I can see most of the way around it. Uh, all I see is this mass of a red dodge like go tearing past me without exaggerating I'm gonna say they were within 10 feet of the car coming the opposite direction to give the absolute benefit of the doubt maybe 20 feet but that's the closing speed if they're both going 50 miles uh, that's the closing speed of 100 miles an hour right there and to be within 10 feet of another car I don't know it's another bro dozer I mean I understand to a point you know you get you get a little buzzed off all the Axe body spray and pumped up on the old Florida Georgia line and you know, you get the feeling it, I get it, but... This tractor does make a lot of weird noises. Uh, but, you know, still, hopefully you guys learned what a brodozer is if you didn't know. And I'm glad that uh, nobody was in a near fatal accident tonight. So now we gotta repeat all that and, <laughs> and uh, head out to that other field.